Hey, what's up guys? This is Daniel DLF Productions and I want to do a video of my DVD collection. And just like what I did a while back with my music collection, I'm not going to get into any detail because it'll take too long and I just want to get straight forward with it. So let's get started with the collection. And like I said, I'm not going to get into much detail because it'll take forever to do one this whole vid. So I just want to get straight forward to it. So, yeah, uh, let's we'll start off with the shelf on top of here. I'm going to pull out some of the movies I have on the top shelf. There ain't that much up here, but I'm going to fill it up and, yes, yeah, so of course, there's, gonna, there's books up here too. The moment, uh, yeah, anyway. First DVD, The Messenger, Joan of Arc. I know a lot of people don't like this film, but hey, for something that's six ninety nine at Best Buy, and the fact that I, I this is my opinion. A lot of people might not agree with me, but that's just how I, and that's fine because everyone has their opinions. But I think this movie has some pretty good sceneries. I mean, this is good. It has good camera shots by Luc Besson, even though, like I said, even though it's not really well liked at all. Like I said, it's not that bad of a movie. That's just how I look at it. Plus, you have a really good cast of people here. This is just what I think. Like I said, no one has to agree with me. That's fine. You have Mila Jovovich, John Malkovich, Faye Dunaway, and Dustin Hoffman. And that, to me, is a good cast. So, yeah, so I really don't hate this movie. Like I said, it has some pretty decent battle scenes. And, like I said, some things are shot pretty well. But, it's, but not every movie's gonna be like so. Each his own. And the next movie I wanna show. Well, actually, I shouldn't say a movie, but a DVD. I wanna show is Saturday Night Live: The Best of Chris Farley. And I have to say, this has a pretty good collection of his moments. And uh, like I say, and Chris Farley, rest in peace. Yeah, pretty watchable DVD and has a lot of funny skits, especially the one with Patrick Swayze and him in that infamous, in that famous uh, Chip and Dale thing sketch. The next movie that I want to show, which I think is one of, to me, the best ghost movies ever made. Well, technically, I look, it's still a ghost film. To me, I think this is, to me, the best film created by M. Night Shyamalan. I mean, there's a lot of films he's done that, that after that, but they weren't that good compared to this. And I think this is one of his better films, and I think he really pulls it off really well, especially with the twist at the end. And, like, and it's really, and you yeah, have Bruce Willis on The Sixth Sense, so... Yeah, I really like this film. I think this is one of the best creep out films ever made. And it's got its creepy moments. But it's very interesting though. It's not like today's movies where they do the ghost films. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's great, whatever. And they just don't have that thrill to it like this movie. Some of them will be like, they're, they might have a twist, but they always fall flat. Either you see it coming or you just find it like, eh, that's it. This movie has a good twist at the end and you wouldn't see it coming. Because that's how M. Night Shyamalan does his films. He throws you off there on purpose. This film didn't throw me off at all. I thought this was really well made and well filmed. And well written. I like the cast they have. with Especially Haley Joel Os Osmond who really pulls off that part really well. And I think he was, did a good job. And I couldn't see anyone else playing that part. I had to give that kid credit. Yeah, and the next film is Big Bully with Rick Moranis and Tom Arnold. It's an okay film. I, I don't mind the movie. I think Rick Moranis is a good actor, and I don't mind Tom Arnold. The next film is that I have, and I think this is one of my personal favorite comedies because I really like Chris Farley's stuff, and that film is 
Beverly Hills Ninja. And plus, I like the movie and all, and I like the fact that you got Robin Shao, who played Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat, the movie. And and, uh, and you have Chris Rock. It's a really fun film, and never gets old to me, no matter how many times I've seen it. It's just that just the th things he does just cracks me up every time. Thanks, asshole. <laughs> Freaking Chris. Uh, and the next DVDs I have, this is a TV show. And it's Dave Chappelle Season 1. And Season 2. Really enjoyed watching these for a good laugh. And, and this is like something me and this guy in last year and the year before actually actually since my freshman year we always just talked about the sketches and we always joked around by reenacting them well, not fully really enacting them we're just like talking and we start singing our favorite lines and shit but yeah I really like Dave Chappelle stuff and another movie I have is some I picked up a blockbuster a while some time ago this year and I remember thinking about the trailer. This is before I realized, you know what, I'm not going to fucking fall for trails ever again. And this is an example of why. I have to say this is Samuel L. Jackson's least better films. It was okay, but not his best. I mean, I liked him mostly in this film, but I didn't care for anybody in this film personally that much at all. But that's the honest truth. And this movie could have been better. It could have been more suspenseful. And just didn't do it for me. That film is Lakeview Terrace. And I saw it, I bought it, and I realized, you know what, this movie isn't that good. I actually expected a lot more. I had this scene, you have Sam Jackson, who's super actor, in my opinion. Another good actor that I like. And it just could have been better. And this is what they put. A tense and exciting thriller you don't want to miss. Samuel Jackson is at his menacing best. Okay, maybe he it, it maybe it does have its moments, but it just didn't do it for me. I don't know. I just thought the storyline was a little, a little weak in my opinion. I mean, I can understand that he is doing the shit he's doing because that the fact the couple's biracial and that's the thing. He comes off racist. Yeah, black racist. But they're out there. I'm not saying anything like that. It doesn't matter what race you are. It's there. You can be a different race and you can still be racist on a certain level. And, I mean, it had some moments. I didn't mind the movie, but I, I didn't really care for it that much. I wasn't really that big on it. kind of expected a little bit more, but, you know. But, and I know there's another movie that came out years before that called Unlawful Entry, which kind of has the same exact kind of plot with the crazy cop and all. But I have not seen that yet. I want to see it, though. I'm probably going to download the torrent check it out because I really want to check that out and plus I really think Kurt Russell's a good actor too so I'd like to see that and the next one is also a TV show it's Viva La Band season 2 and 3 I actually like this show and I used to watch him when I'm on MTV that to me that was when when MTV was decent to watch even though I, it was pretty much at the shitty point of its time but you know what it was worth watching. But once that show got taken off the air, and it just did, there wasn't really much for me to watch on MTV. I stopped caring after that. MTV sucks now, anyway. It's not even called MTV. It should be called Stage Teen Drama Bullshit that no one gives a flying fuck about, and no one can act to save their lives. And dumb dating shows, you know, that good stuff. But yeah, pretty wasteful stuff television and the next one is also TV shows and it's not just one two three but four seasons of married with children friggin love the show the death and Al Bundy's an awesome character of all time in my book one of the best TV characters ever created no one could ever play be this character better than Ed O'Neill God bless this guy Season 2, and this has got more sh episodes, of course. It happens as the show goes on. Season 3, 
that's when they changed the theme song for the DVD, which I thought was a terrible idea. It makes you want to slap yourself because you're stuck listening to a stupid generic version of the song, which is not the same. They should have just stuck with Love and Marriage, but of course the whole thing, you know, I mean, you're going to get that theme song again, no doubt, don't, do we? But yeah, season four. Yeah, I'm going to get more of this show, of the other seasons, I want to keep making, see what I'm do is, doing is, I'm not done with the collecting the show on DVD, I'm still going to get more on DVD, like get five, six, seven, eight, and the other, well, all the steps, all the other ones, but I've seen, I'm in a big ruckus right now, so I don't, anyway, but I will get the other seasons eventually.